Hello, my name is Maria Miller from MathMammoth.com and this is Mathy, my mascot and assistant. You might wonder who this is. He's Giganto, Mathy's cousin. Just for this video, we have Giganto2 to join us. We're gonna study line graphs. Okay, here's first of all, I have some data. Day and muffin sales, and we're gonna make a line graph out of that over here. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. In a line graph, you always have some kind of a time unit here. It could be weekdays, it could be months, it could be hours, anything, as long as it is time, okay? That's usually the case. And then muffin sales is whatever we are graphing is muffin sales. Now, to do my line graph, I will need to draw one dot for each of these numbers somewhere here. Before I do that, I need to determine the scale of this axis. And for that, what's the biggest number here? Is 49. So I need my scale to go up to at least 50, right? And so let's say if I put 5, 10, 15, 20, that should about work, okay? So 10 here, 20, 30, 40, and 50. That will work. It would also work to have it double as much because I could have four of those tick marks to be 10. But let's try this. Monday, the sales were 23. So I go to Monday and then go up to 23, approximately here. Tuesday, 35. Wednesday, 29. It is much easier to do this if you have actually grid paper. Thursday, 41. And then Friday, 49. The last thing to do now is to join these dots with line segments. Okay, now the line graph is ready and we can see that, okay, looks like the sales tended to increase over the week. Maybe they advertised it more or something, but it seems like sales increased. Lastly, estimate the total sales for the week. For that, I could use the graph, but since I have the numbers, I will much rather use the numbers themselves. And to estimate, I can round my numbers, okay? To the nearest 10, I think here. I can keep the 35 as it is, so that I won't have so much error here. Now I have five here, and then here five, 10, 17. About 175 is my estimation. Now we will go on to the second problem where we will have a double line graph. It has to do with Mathis and Giganto's quiz scores. Okay, Mathis has pretty good numbers, like near 100%, and Gigant has some others. Again, we have dates here, so they go here on the horizontal axis. Over here, we will need to now decide the scaling. And let me take my ruler to show you how that works. If I measure how much I have here, I have a little over, okay, maybe 37 centimeters, this much. And I want it to go up to 100 over here. So maybe I'll put each 10 mark here, 10, 20, 30, 40, etc. 37 centimeters. Okay, I can use the number 30, divide that by 10, and I will get 3 centimeters for each 10, like that, okay? So I will make my tick marks at each 3 centimeters. If you have grid paper, then by all means you will count a little units there and then figure out how many units you will use for each 10, for each tick mark. There, so we would have 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, and 100 percent there. And now we are ready to draw the line graph. And I will use two different colors now, one for Mathy's scores, the other one for Giganto's, so it will be differentiated better. Mathy, first test, 100%. Over here. Second test, 95%. And then, again, 95. Then 80. What happened here, Mathy? Did you fall asleep? He said he thought it was such an easy test he didn't study much. And oops, you got 80%. 
97%. If you're back to your normal, then the last one is exactly 100%. Okay, and then for Giganta starting, the first date and 68%. Then 75%. Then 77. Then you did really good. 92. 71 and 84. There. Now it's time to connect them with lines. Lastly, it's very possible that you would show this graph to somebody without all this information in the table. So we need a legend. That means something that tells the person how to differentiate. Mathy is the red line, and then Giganta is the blue one. So that needs to be added to the graph or be somewhere there, near there, so people can see which one is which. We also could add here percent. Okay. And the title for the whole graph would be Math Quiz Scores. And this one is date, of course. But you can probably tell that even without me writing that it's the date. Now let's describe how did Matthew do overall. We can see that his graph is pretty steady except for that one dip when he didn't study very well. So he's doing steady and very well, very close to 100%. Now Gidanta, on the other hand, seems to be on the upward trend and then goes kind of zigzaggy. Or you could think that, well, he seems to be improving maybe a little bit, except for that one test where he did really well compared to his normal. What happened that time, Giganter? He said he studied really hard. He knew it's kind of easy test, so he tried to really ace it. Okay. And Matthew kind of... No, Matthew did just the opposite. He didn't study much and didn't do well. Now, another thing we could study from this is calculate the average score. I'm not going to do it this time, but that's a typical math book question to take all these numbers, add them up and divide by however many there are to get the average score. And uh, we can be sure Matthew's average score is better than Gigantos in this case. Okay. I hope this was helpful.